In this video, I unbox the Commander X16 Developer Edition. I purchase most of the items shown right here, and I give it a first look. So please bear with me as I fumble my way through this project. All right. It's a very stuffed box. It's very heavy, compact. So let's see what's in it. I just want to say on the keyboard, I do appreciate that this version of the keyboard has the Commander X16 branding and it has all the buttons are labeled and you don't have to use the stickers to put all the Petski codes on there. So I think it's a really, really nice keyboard. It's super quiet. It's a soft uh, touch and it, it's beautifully done. Taking a look at the Commander 16, you'll see that I have the one labeled PR00620. So right here are the memory chips, and including the expansion ones that I purchased. There is a jumper right there to remove write protect from the system ROM. We have our power reset and NMI buttons. We have our power LED and activity lights. We have an NMI jumper. And then there's a few jumpers that are standard in the ATX case. This is an ATX motherboard, which means that you can put it in an ATX, a standard ATX case. The motherboard also has a 6502, 60, 65CO2 CPU, it's a brand new that was developed for the Commander X16. And it has an IRQ jumper right here. It has a daughter board for the Vera FPGA. And we'll take a look at that. And these components here, we have our PS2 keyboard and mouse. We have our audio out right next to that. We have our VGA. We have our S-Video composite. We have our standard SD card, which I recommend backing it up. There's no reason not to just make a quick copy of this so you don't lose any information. And you have your SNES controller inputs right there and an IEC input. The other thing that this thing has, if you look on the back here, 
you know, this SNES 3 and 4, because the Commander 16, X16, supports up to four controllers, but you'll need some kind of an adapter in order to use the additional controllers. And then I was kind of looking around on here. I don't know a whole lot about the motherboards, of course. And we'll see what the date is right here. It shows September 2023 right there. Looking at the back, I thought, why would we even look at the back of the motherboard? But there is some information on the back of the motherboard. There's some uh, pinouts, layouts here, which could be useful, I guess, if you're debugging a problem or if you just need to know what all the pins are. And then it has the concept and design, David Murray, the Vera development and all that. So I thought that was cool. So that is my kind of a walkthrough of the motherboard. You have these expansion ports, which I did buy the expansion, kind of user expansion thing, but I have no idea <laughs> what to do with this. And then also there is a user port right here, this user port. And then one thing I almost forgot to point out was that there is this edge connector that the Commander X16 has built in, which is a nice little feature, although I don't know what its intended purpose is. It even has a CR2032 battery in there. And it's nice that it tells you which one to use because they have all the different numbers like 24 and 25. And you'll notice there is a system speed jumper that will take the speed from eight megahertz down to four or two. I'm not really sure what the use case is for that, but it is interesting that it is an available option. And I am waiting for the delivery of my, um, the official Commander X16 case. Now, when you buy the developer kit, you have the option of purchasing a power adapter from them but I went ahead and purchased it separately on Amazon because it had all these nifty little adapters you just have to make sure you pick the one that supports the power requirements and pay attention to that slider there it needs to be on 12 volts I learned that the hard way in this segment I'm installing these chips onto the Commander X16 motherboard and it was surprising to me how difficult this was because those pins don't just sit in by themselves. They have to be coaxed in and bent a certain way and you have to be very careful putting these in. It was not easy putting these chips into the motherboard. It took a little bit of finesse and you have to be careful not to bend the pins. And then finally I found the adapter for the power and I'm able to plug in the ATX power adapter. We could try the X16 for the first time. Now I made a couple of mistakes here leading up to powering on the X16. I went ahead and I tried S video first and I also tried to power on the device with the adapter set to three volts, which it didn't even power on at that rate. But I figured out quickly that you needed to use the VGA first. I guess I should plug in my keyboard. And then here I sped up. I did a quick little hello world go to loop using the Commander X16 built in basic. All right, well, I pulled out a mouse. I'm going to see if I can use this PS2 adapter, which I have my doubts this will work. Ultimately, I was unable to get that PS2 adapter to work with any mouse. All right, I'm going to type menu and go into control panel. And I'm going to switch it to NTSC, which is two. To me, that means S video because when I switch it, the TV finally works. Then I'm going to hit reset to see if it sticks the setting. But no, then it switches back to this, to the VGA. 
was a control panel. Okay, you have to hit F set. You have to save setting. I've gotten it set over to S video. So I really want to use this old TV, but I don't know if I don't think I can because it's chopping the left side off. Let me see what screen mode. Oh, okay. Ooh. So it depends on what mode you... There you go. If I go to a smaller mode. And maybe I just use a smaller mode for this. Mode 8 will probably work. Oh, no. No, not mode 8. Well, I like this better. Mode... Mode 9. Save settings and VRAM. Escape out. Okay, that's better. Here I wanted to show pressing the power button. And one of the things that was really neat about the X16 for the first time using it, when I typed menu in, that was just me thinking that maybe this will work. And this is me plugging in the SD card for the first time. Uh, so it, basically the user interface is intuitive. And then I figured out you could just type reset if you want to reset it. And then I looked in the guide and you can type in power off to power off the X16. So I, I do appreciate the level of thought and detail that went into designing the user interface. I picked up a few speakers because I realized I don't know where my other little ones are and I'm going to plug them in right there. And then I, I also picked up this mouse on Amazon. You could get it from Tex Electric, but I believe it's the same exact model and it's about $4 cheaper on Amazon. Now let's see if we have a mouse and do launch. I have to admit, I had no idea how to get the mouse working or if it would just work automatically going into the editor, but I was fiddling around until I figured out some programs use the mouse. Oh, there's my mouse, by the way. Huh, when did that, where'd that come from? Let's type mouse. Does that work? No, okay. That was... Shot in the dark. Go X info. Any of these that my mouse works. Okay. Reset because I don't know how to get out of that. And I bet Planet X has a theme song, or Planet X 16. Yeah, I knew it has something. So these speakers are USB powered. And they have a little volume adapter right here, and they were only like 10 bucks on Amazon. And pretty good quality, actually, just from the little bit I've used them today. And I do not know how to play this game. I'm not gonna lie. Anyhow, that is what I've learned so far of the Commander X16. I have a lot more to learn about this system, so I am going to continue playing around.